Yep. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to support the comments that have just been made by the member for Fowler and Cowan. When, a member, when the previous member for Warringah was Prime Minister, he committed to permanently resettling 12,000 Syrian refugees caught in, in the middle of the tragic civil war. At the time, it was described by Mr Abbott as one of the largest resettlement policies in the world to date. Women, children and families from persecuted minorities who were sheltering in, the co in countries such as Jordan, Lebanon and Turkey were given priority. Of those 12,000 resettlement positions, 7,000 were settled in the Fairfield and Liverpool regions in both uh, the electorate of Fowler, McMahon and my own of Werriwa. Liverpool and southwestern Sydney is in general one of the most diverse cultural areas of Sydney and Australia. The electorate thrives in its multiculturalism. Liverpool and Fairfield have welcomed and supported several generations of refugees from around the world and, the huma and certainly humanitarian migration. The resettlement plan was also made placing these refugees in rural areas as a priority. However, four years down the track, these people are returning to their communities here in my electorate. This is supported by data from the Migrant Resource Centre, which is based in Liverpool, and shows that Liverpool has the highest rate of second movements in Australia, a result of a strong multicultural makeup of the area and people wanting to come back to the places and families they know. But what we have seen is nothing short of a disaster for these refugees. This government, who was responsible for this resettlement policy, has now made changes, and this review um, including the way that complex resettlement cases have been funded. <coughs> Previously, straightforward resettlement cases would be eligible for basic support of up to 12 months, and more complex cases would receive more intense support for up to five years. However, af after the review, the resettlement plan was moved to effectively a three-tier system and incorporated a number of changes which strangled the frontline services from funding. The Western Sydney Migrant Resource Centre is the largest provider of refugee settlement services in this region. In the first year of the program, it saw 1,703 clients. In the last financial year, the number was 2,704, 1,001 new clients over three years. There is need for these vital, the need for these vital services is clear. The MRC said that the reduced scope of service delivery built into the program framework means a loss of intensive capacity and building support to the most vulnerable of these refugees. While net funding may show an increase, other vital services were removed, such as translation services, basic booking structure. The MRC attempted to provide these much-needed significant services under the new system, but does so at a loss, and it's not it's not viable for the service providers to continue to do so. Mr Speaker, it is a humanitarian injustice to commit to supporting these refugees but structure the support system to choke funding from the frontline service providers that provide the resettlement service support. The effect is clear. As a result of the funding changes, the MRC employment preparation workshops have been eliminated. 50 per cent of the youth services have have been reduced, um, and despite that at every opportunity this program is oversubscribed, preparedness and planning for emerging needs has been significantly compromised. It is a disgrace that the government has commissioned reviews into the pro program and, as a result, made changes which force service providers to operate at a loss and risk current clients that need their services. These are some of our most critically vulnerable people in our society. Some of those in my community are the Yazidi women who were used as sex slaves by ISIS. Their stories are truly horrific and they need significant intensive support. And that support must be ongoing. We cannot allow these people to fall through the cracks. We made the commitment for them, for us as a country, to accept them and support them. They want to be part of our community. Allowing this chronic shortfall of services to continue because a program is underfunded further marginalises these people and potentially puts them out on the street. Again, I support the motion put by the member for Fowler.